Greetings. It is a pleasure to have some time with you folks today. And first of all, I'll identify who I am, which I'm Richard Walker. And I want to take a moment to thank you for allowing me to present one of my many presentations. What is my professional background? I think it's important for you to understand a little bit about just who I am and where I'm coming from. After 30 years, I retired from the medical field. My medical career began at Indiana University while I majored in allied health. From my academic background, I served in the United States Army Medical Corps while stationed in Korea and later returning to the civilian world, I assisted running pathology laboratories, both private and clinical hospital laboratories. I completed my professional career with the international company of GlaxoSmithKline Clinical Pathology Laboratory, whereupon I took my retirement. My lectures are sponsored by Home Choice Network where we believe in independence for seniors and peace of mind for families. Home Choice Network is a home care agency, which is licensed by the state of North Carolina and regulated by the Department of Health and Human Services out of Raleigh. We have been in existence for 16 years, matter of fact, over 16 years. By the way, I have held the position of president of Toastmasters International Club of the Sand Hills. This is a worldwide organization dedicated to public speaking and leadership development. At this time, I would like for you folks to sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy my presentation that I have for you today. And the title of my presentation is to speak or not to speak? That is the question. A Hindu philosophy states, you are what your deepest desire is. As your desire is, so is your intention. As your intention is, so is your will. As your will is, so is your deed. As your deed is, so is your destiny. Why have I given that Hindu philosophy? Well, it is a challenge for people to stand up and to speak. And as the Hindu philosophy states, we must move forward with our desires, our deeds, and make the accomplishments that we want to make in life. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard the soliloquy in Shakespeare's Hamlet, to be or not to be? That is the question. Well, that's where I got the title of my speech, to speak or not to speak. That is the question. So what is my point? Remain seated or stand up. There are moments in our lives that we want to say something. There are moments in our lives we want to express how we feel, but we find it as a challenge. And hopefully the presentation I give today will help you understand how to face these challenges. How do we want to be heard? This is the question of any speech that we put together. Is there fear in standing up? Of course. Will I be judged? How will I be judged? Will I make a mistake? All of these thoughts go through our mind. So how can I relinquish fear? Well, I'm sure a lot of you have studied history or may even remember a comment that Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said during the height of the depression and going into World War II, the country was in disarray just like we have challenges in our country today. But as Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Once we overcome this fear, we can move forward and make progress throughout our careers and throughout our lives. 
First, in order to overcome fear, you must know yourself. What are my expe expectations regarding this particular speech that I'm preparing? Why have I prepared this particular speech? What is my objective? And am I prepared to give a speech? If I'm nervous, why? I must look at who I am, what is my objective, and what do I want to achieve? May even be as simple as, how am I going to dress? Do I want to put on a three-piece suit? Or do I just want to dress in a casual clothes? In order to understand more of how we should prepare our speech, we need to know our audience. And at the same time, you need to back up and think about, well, have I practiced my speech enough to gain confidence? If I'm using notes, are my notes clear and well-organized, structured and simplified? Now the word simplified or simplification is very, very important. The more simple you construct something or put something together, the it's easier to remember the key points you want to make and to make a presentation. Do I understand in reality, who am I speaking to? Who is my audience? And secondly, you must know your audience and have an understanding of what to expect. The more you know and understand your audience, the better you're going to present a speech that's going to relate to your audience and be accepted by your audience. Why has the audience arrived and what will they actually expect of me today? You have to think about these things, not just think, think about your world or what you want to say, which is very important, but you have to understand to whom you're speaking and what is important to them and what will their expectations be. What is your objective in talking to this particular audience today? And what type of objectives do you really have with your speech in relation to what you feel the objectives of the audience will have in listening to you? So you must also enhance control with eye contact. This is very important. When you are giving a speech, or a particular presentation. Eye contact with the audience is very, very crucial, very important. It allows the audience and you to become as one. So you might think, well, that's going to be difficult. I always get nervous when I stand up in front of a lot of people. Well, that's understandable. So how do you have control and how do you remove your uneasiness or nervousness? Well, that again is far easier than you might realize. Whether you're speaking in front of an audience of 30 people, 300 people, or 3,000, here's what you do. You pick out three individuals in the audience that you notice have a very pleasant facial expression, have a smile on their face, have a, a facial expression of Wonder, wonder what he's going to say today. That's acting like, hey, I'm interested and I'm glad to be here. So consequently, you look to your left, you find one individual. When you begin your presentation, you look in the center, find one individual, and you look to your right, and you find one individual that is listening to what you have to say, that is showing contentment, and is acting as though, hey, I'm glad to be here today. Now you concentrate as you continue to give your presentation, you concentrate on those three individuals. Now you're really giving a speech to three individuals, not 30, 300, 3,000. But as far as the audience is concerned, you're looking at all of them. And consequently, they become all the more interested in what you have to say. Now, it's also important to use appropriate gestures. You don't want to just stand up there and look to your left 
center and right and give a presentation. You want to become part of the audience. You need to have a reason for why you're going to make a particular gesture. And this brings the audience more into one unit, yourself and the audience. For example, you may want to make three points. So you hold up your hand and you hold up three fingers and you say number one, number two, number three on the points that you're making. Now you're acting as a more camaraderie with the audience. And you also may just want to take a moment and say, folks, I'd like for you to clap three times. One, two, three. Now that we're all awake, let's continue to go forward. Now, what have I just done? I have included the audience in my presentation. I have allowed the audience and myself to become, like I said, as one. Now, another important factor is in gestures, you need to allow your body to move throughout the stage. Walk over to the right, walk in the center. And as you're given a presentation, walk over to the left. Then you may want to go back to the podium. As you're making your presentation, you're involving the audience as well as yourself relating closer to the audience as you're making the presentation. Now, here is some particular criteria in evaluating uh, what is a good speech. And I thought you might find this of interest. First of all, you must have clarity. Are you understood? And have you communicated your key points well? Again, clarity. Now, you must also have vocal variety. Nothing can become more boring than a monotone voice. I'm telling you folks, what I've got to say, I think is very important today. That brings in a variety in the tone of your voice. So consequently, you're getting away from being just a monotone recorded record. I've already talked about eye contact and I've already talked about gestures. And I've already talked about audience awareness. Now, we do have control level. Are you self-assured in portraying yourself as being confident? There's nothing more frustrating for an audience to listen to someone who is not clear in what they have to say, not sure about what key points they're making, and is not coming across like, hey, that guy knows what he's talking about. I haven't had anyone in a long time to come across as confident as what that speaker was. I really enjoy that presentation. So your confidence will go over to their confidence of accepting what you have to say. And make your presentation of interest, make it believable, compelling. So are you speaking with enthusiasm? Again, getting away from that monotone effect is very, very important. And the purposeful movement that you make, a good speech always comes across effectively as you use your body language. So all of your body is important to use, your hands, your arms, your walking, uh, your head movements. Uh, your eye contact, as we talked about. And if there's a chair on the stage, you may even decide to walk over and sit down and say, folks, I'm just going to relax as I continue to give a presentation because uh, like yourselves, now we're all seated together. Uh, whatever position you want to take, but make it of interest. Now, it is very important to have an organized speech but at the same time to keep it simple. And I'm going to give you an example of a very, very short speech. And this speech was given by Winston Churchill following World War II. Shortly after World War II, and I think it was the University of Illinois, but there was a university that asked him to give a 
presentation at the commencement uh, for graduation uh, of this. And consequently, uh, he accepted. And folks were extremely excited to hear what Winston Churchill had to say. He was a world-renowned figure. And it was his spirit, his enthusiasm, his determination that kept England moving forward in the darkest of hours with the encroachment of the Nazis. So they got ready uh, to uh, have him give a presentation. They gave a uh, phenomenal in, uh, in introduction. So Winston Churchill walked slowly up to the podium and he looked to his left and said, never, and looked in the center and said, never. And he looked to the right. And once again, he said, never. And looked directly at the audience, back to the center, give up. He turned around, walked back, and sat down. This stunned the audience initially, and then it began to sink in. This is how he brought Britain together and assisted bringing a tight bond for the allies, both of, for the United States and Britain, to overcome the terrible Nazi atrocities that it was taking place around the world. And the point was, you never, never give up. Now, what better speech could there have been at a commencement graduation ceremony for university students graduating and to go forward in life was to always keep in mind, never, never, never give up. So did he have a structured speech that was very, well performed? And the answer is yes. He had brevity. He had simplicity. He had a thought provoking statement. And consequently, caught the attention of the audience. He took charge as to what he had to say. Everybody was quiet. The body of his speech was emphatic. You just never, never, never. And then he ended it bring it into conclusion, give up. So it most certainly was had clarity and he most certainly had the audience in mind as to what he wanted to achieve and they're remembering the value of having a university degree and go forward in life and never giving up. Now, Picasso is a famous artist. And once he said, action is the foundational key to all success. Now stop and think about that. To stand up and give a speech takes action. You have to move forward. As Winston Churchill said, you just never, never, never give up. So Picasso, I think, hits everything action is the foundational key to all success so i say remember to be or not to be that is the question so in closing once again i want to thank you for allowing myself and home choice network to spend some time with you today i hope you enjoyed my lecture and presentation that i've given on speak or not to speak Public speaking is a challenge, that's for sure. It is always a pleasure to have time with you and always we at Home Choice Network take great concern in helping folks enjoy each and every day. Your health and happiness are especially important to us. Have a great day.